Welcome to Questions with L.A. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, and we'll get into your questions. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Thick skin is for more than just protecting you against hurtful words. It also helps keep you looking young because aging turns our skin from thick and supple to thin and less elastic. Help fight wrinkles and sagging skin with multi-collagen. Multi-collagen helps improve skin texture, hydration, and skin elasticity. It's made with the top five most critical research types of collagen that support your skin against wrinkles and sagging skin. Folks, get a bag for 50% off, plus receive several free bonuses by going to www.healthwithla.com. That's healthwithla.com, or by simply clicking the link down below. Thanks so much for watching. We've got a bunch of questions here. Before I get into that, uh, we've had some nasty trolls on our YouTube channel. I do believe in free speech and uh, I'm not liking a lot of what we're reading there. So uh, try to keep it light, you know, and uh, be kind and loving to one another if you can. All right. That would be really good. Otherwise, I will um, just not allow the comments to come back there. But let's get right into it. Hey, LA, my question is this. Are you at odds with the scientific narrative uh, of evolution? If so, what are you in disagreement with? If not, how do you reconcile the biblical prophetic narrative? Do you wholeheartedly believe in creation? Is the Darwinian narrative something you understand fully? If so, how does it not explain how we got here in a more reasonable way than biblical creation? I love this. This is great. I would like to hear your opinion on such topics. It seems you don't touch on these subjects and focus only on the mysterious things. Well, we'll get into that in just a moment. I understand supernatural phenomena is your thing, but I would like you to understand better where you are coming from. I'm not trying to poke holes in your work. I too understand there are some unexplained phenomena. And that's from JK Tech. Okay, let's get into it. Are you at odds with the scientific narrative on evolution? First of all, the scientific uh, narrative on evolution is not so scientific. It is still a theory of evolution. The neo-Darwinist, so I am at great odds with evolution. Uh, when Darwin put forth his theory, he didn't know about the complexity of a deoxyribonucleic double helix of life, the DNA molecular structure. It wasn't discovered then, but it was there but no one knew it was there. They knew something was up, but no one discovered it to Watson and Crick uh, in the latter part of the 20th century. So isn't that interesting? The neo-Darwinists look at the complexity of a double helix of life, and they scratch their heads and they kind of go, you know, uh, all the billions of years in the primordial slime is not going to create this. This was created by someone. If you have not seen Ben Stein's groundbreaking movie, Expelled No Intelligence Allowed Me, I suggest you watch that. Because Stein sits down, Ben Stein sits down with one of the premier evolutionists of the 20th and 21st first century, Richard Dawkins. And he says, Richard, where did the first self-replicating molecule come from? And Dawkins has no answer. He says, well, we don't know, nor does anyone else. Um, and so Dawkins you know, has no idea of how all this began. Nor does anyone else, he says. Okay, so Stein throws him sort of an intellectual lifeline. Well, how do you think it could have happened? And then we get into a Star Wars movie because uh, um, Dawkins looks at the camera and goes, well, I suppose it could have happened in some, some way like this, that, you know, in a galaxy far, far away, an advanced civilization, which, of course, had arrived there by some sort of Darwinian evolution, seeded us here. That's called panspermia. That is what I talk about continually in my books and films and everything else. This is the coming great deception because it dovetails right with the Darwinian theory. And the neo-Darwinists are looking out there because they figured that, well, we had to have been seated here by some point, something, some advanced civilization. And that's why the movie Expelled is so important to watch because Stein sits down with Dawkins and Dawkins recites the mantra uh, of the neo-Darwinist that, you know, maybe we were seated here, panspermia, by some advanced race of extraterrestrials, but that begs the question, where did they come from? And around and around and around we go. So let's continue. Um, how do you reconcile the biblical prophetic narrative? Well, uh, do you wholeheartedly believe in creation? Absolutely. When Jesus was here and he fed the 5,000 people, he just had what? A couple of fish and, a, and what, two loaves of bread, 5,000 people? That's not going to work now, is it, partner? So he blesses the food and they feed 5,000 and they collect enough food leftovers 
to, to fill 12 baskets. Ex nihilo, out of nothing. This is why he's God. And this is why it just blows our mind when he actually does stuff, um, in, oops, sorry, in, in, in our world. It's a mind-boggling situation when someone walks into a hospital with stage four cancer and all of a sudden, just like that, they're healed. Does it happen every time? No, it doesn't. And I have no idea why it happens with some people and not others. I, I really don't. I don't get that. It's one of the first questions I will ask uh, when we get to the other side. But I do believe wholeheartedly in the biblical creation story. If you read Genesis 1-1, he speaks everything into existence. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. He was the life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. So, you know, obviously you, you have trouble with the supernatural. A lot of people do. I totally understand that. But the supernatural world is real and is more... Um, more real than the world that surrounds us. In fact, some of us believe that we might be living in some sort of a holographic universe. But let's move on. Uh, Aloha, LA. This is from Susan and Thomas. Thank you for addressing my question regarding crop circles. However, what I really want to know is your thoughts on who or what is behind the real crop circles. Do you think they are messages from the good guys or the bad guys? Well, um, and, and Susan and Thomas write, God bless you, and thank you for all that you are doing. We watch every episode, and I'm sorry because you wrote WHO, and I just assumed you were going to start asking me a question about World Health Organization. But I am wrong, and I digress. So here's the deal. I'm, we're working on number five in our ongoing UFO series. It is on crop circles. We're calling the, uh, the film Convergence because what we show— is that there is an absolute connectivity between these ancient mounds and the crop circles. In England, they appear right next to all these ancient megalithic sites. Is that just a coinkadink? I don't think so. So here's what I think. This is another part of the UFO phenomena. And they throw this out because it, it mystifies us. Wow, how does that work? How, there was nothing in the field here yesterday, no footprints in the field, and there it is. But we've got a crop circle that's going to blow the lid off this whole thing. And I want to thank um, the gentleman, I'll keep his name anonymous for the time being, who's allowing me to use his footage uh, from that. He's a crop circle investigator, really neat guy. And I had a great chat up with him about a week and a half ago. And um, we bought the rights to the footage. Uh, they're mostly still photography, but they're incredible. And then, of course, we've interviewed Matt Hines, who's a... Uh, uh, he sort of put all this together for us. So I think you'll find the Crop Circle film extremely interesting, and we call it Convergence. We also filmed at the Crop Circle Museum in the UK, right in Wilshire, and with uh, Hugh Newman and, of course, our good friend Francisco Carrera, uh, who joined us for that. And you'll find that really interesting. Next week, we're going to an undisclosed location. Myself and our good friend Gil Zimmerman, we will be view interviewing someone who I will not mention his name now, but I will let you know later. If I told you who it was, you would, most of you would know the connection. But I'll just leave it at that. And uh, we're excited about this film. It should be out in January. That will be number five in our ongoing UFO series. Let's move on. Um, this is from an article I felt you could debunk and give clarification to your audience for the deception of this article. This is from Rosalie Dent. And basically what this is, technology that lets us speak to our dead relatives has arrived. Are we ready? This, of course, is the AI, artificial intelligence stuff. You can now get apps on your phone and all this other stuff. Run to the nearest exit. This is high-tech necromancy is what it is, in my opinion. High-tech necromancy. I hope that answers your question. Um, this is from Carlos, L.A. Have you ever visited Coral Castle near Homestead, Florida? I spent like two or three days there. They wouldn't let us film. Ah, you can't film here. <laughs> we went down there deliberately to film at Coral Castle, but they wouldn't let us film there. Um, there's this one gate which is probably 8 to 10 feet tall and like 4 feet wide. And when um, uh, Leif Laxcallen, um and constructed this, you could push it with a finger. In fact, if you go and, and you look at the videos when he's doing this, um, I think it's lead, what, what's his, it's, 
Last, anyway, I'm butchering his name. I apologize for that. But yeah, I was there. And you could push that door originally with one finger. Now, they tried to repair it and couldn't figure it out. Something is going on there. There's no doubt about it. However, Masonic symbols are all through the place. So the guy was a high-tech um, uh, mason, in my opinion. There's also this very enigmatic wheel, which we photographed. Uh, and uh, never done anything. Like I said, we couldn't, they wouldn't allow us to photograph or film on the property, no matter what. They just wouldn't do it. Um, they didn't like our paradigm. But uh, we, we tried. And in my opinion, uh, some of that is supernatural. Definitely something else is going on. Did he know about levitation? I don't know. Very mysterious. And if you get a chance, check it out. Um, this is from Mounds. No, I'm sorry. This is from... Uh, actually, there's no there's no name here, so it's just Suzik 1953. Hello, Suzik. That's your email, and we'll go from there. Hi, Leah. My question is that I live in Iowa. We have a place called the Effigy Mounds National Monument up in northern Iowa along the Mississippi River. Would these be truly mounds of Native Americans or giant mounds? It's hard to tell. Native Americans did engage in some of this. They did build the smaller ones and oftentimes used the larger ones for uh, secondary interments, for their, their burials. Um, I, I went online and I kind of took a look at it. Uh, in my opinion, the mound building culture is definitely Nephilim. Uh, Native Americans, for the most part, didn't do this. They didn't build effigy mounds like the Great Serpent Mound, even though modern-day archaeologists are insisting that the Shawnee built it when we know that the Shawnee had nothing to do with it. Why? Because Chief Wallace stated on the record that the Shawnee, when they came into the land, it was here, and they did not build it. So what do you do with that information? Let's continue. This is from WD. Have you ever entertained the definition of the command of God? Be fruitful and replenish the earth. In order to replenish, wouldn't that in itself mean that it already been filled before? Um, I wondered for years about this. Well, uh, I have two. My, um, my take on this WD is simply this, that we are looking at Genesis 1-1 is a recreation. Something else very cataclysmic has happened. I believe it's the, the, the destruction of the dinosaurs. I also believe that's when the rebellion occurs. And that's a three-hour conversation. Did Satan use genetic material to create the dinosaurs? In my opinion, he did. Why? Because they're all from that kingdom, as it were. Hmm, something to think about. But when we get here, the earth is without form and void, but it's still there. And it's replenishing. That's, it's a recreation. I realize that there are many you know, people who are... Uh, well-meaning Christians who don't hold to that view, and that's fine. I believe that there was a gap, and we don't know how long it was, where the earth is, is just standing there. Just something incredibly cataclysmic has happened. The late David Flynn also talked about it. Moving right along, Lisa, uh, I love your work, Mr. Marzillion, have long been interested in giants, but mostly wonder if I will be able to see and meet them. Uh, I'd love it. Uh, Lisa, no, you wouldn't. Uh, a little scary, but fascinating. The Nephilim are in a fixed state, Lisa. Um, they have no soul. They are the soulless ones. This is why the mandate comes down to Joshua and Caleb to destroy them all, because they're without souls. And this is exactly what we're seeing in the modern hybridization program, where these entities are walking amongst us. They are soulless. How do we know that? The witnesses who have contact with them talk about that. Um, and then she says... Uh, are the stasis giants awakening? That's speculation, very possibly. Uh, will we as a whole humanity get to interact with them? Well, we've had people on the show that have talked about encountering one woman in particular uh, on Supernatural Confrontations. Is it Walmart and a 12-foot female comes walking down the aisle? UFO brain fog to the nines. There are three or four other people shopping. They all turn and look at her. No one does anything. No one takes out their phone and goes click, click, click. And then when she leaves the aisle, they all go back to shopping. That's UFO brain fog. She said the woman who, who had this encounter, she came up to this woman's waist. So she estimated her at least 11 feet tall, 12 feet tall. Hope that helps. This is from Erica in Michigan. Hey, LA. Hey, LA. Alan and I have been watching your program for a couple of years. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We wonder if you could comment on the children's game Pokemon and Minecraft. Some of our grandchildren are involved in these games, and we are concerned that there are demonic connections to these games. 
We have heard our grandson talk about portals to the underworld in Minecraft. We also understand that Pokemon Go is a game where a phone app is used to capture Pokemon characters out of thin air. Look, um, it reminds me of your experience at the Serpent Mound or one of the mounds where a Wiccan girl had an app that told her where certain spiritual entities were located. Please tell us whether our fears are based on tr our truth or simply unfounded fears. Look, there's a lot of nonsense out there. The best thing to do is to sit down and ask your kid, your, grand your grandson, your grandchild, hey, show me how this Pokemon thing works. And you have the discernment. You don't need me to tell you. Watch what the game does. Is it just a harmless game? Or is it evoking the opening of gateways or portals? Is it talking about some sort of necromancy connection? So you go online and you look, and there's a lot of nonsense out there. Do your own investigation. That's what I would counsel you in. It's your grandchild, not mine. Do your own investigation. I have one uh, grandbaby. We love her dearly. And, you know, when she gets old enough and she wants to start getting into that, opa, grandpa is going to be all over that like white on rice. Anyway, folks, um, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, our family is undergoing some very strenuous stuff right now. We really covet your prayers. Um, the enemy hates what we do. There's no doubt about that. And the, our, our latest film, number four in the UFO series, uh, The Coming UFO Invasion, exposing the dragon's dark secrets. This is pushed back from the enemy's camp. There's no doubt about that, in my opinion. He is pushing back. He is kicking. But you know what? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And I believe that the bomb of Gilead will be applied to the situation. And what I mean by that, our bomb of Gilead is Jesus. And I just just proclaiming Psalm 91 and the bomb of Gilead. And this, this time it'll be different and we will get through this. We cover your prayers. Um, check us out. You can go to our our website, lamarzulli.net, and there's all sorts of really cool stuff there. You can, you can order stuff online. It won't be there for Christmas, but um, uh, thank you in, in ahead of time for your support for what we do. We are also moving our entire shipping operation from Oklahoma to California. So if you'd like to contribute in that, help with the operation, uh, you can also, you know, contribute. Just go to our website, lamarzulli.net, hit the donation button and go from there. Thanks so much for watching Questions with LA. I'll be back tomorrow. And as I said last week, we, uh, I, did, I got a hold of, of Brendy Wells, John B. Wells' wife. We sat down yesterday at a Zoom call. Fantastic stuff. You will hear all about Valiant Thor. Because I think you'll find this extremely intriguing. They had an encounter at their offices, which defy explanation. I'll just, I'll tease you with this. The room went green. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode, our final episode before Christmas of Supernatural Confrontations. Thanks so much for watching Questions with L.A. If you have a question, please shoot us an email, questions at lamarzulli.net, questions at lamarzulli.net. Be patient. We only do this show once, uh, once a week, and I try to answer about uh, 10 questions if I can. I think we sort of did that today. Hope that answers them, and, and thanks so much for watching. Remember, folks, um, the supernatural world is real. And it does manifest, and it's all around us. If you don't know Jesus, all you need to do is ask him into your heart, and he will come, and he will change your life. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Something very dark and disturbing is happening. It is a global phenomenon that knows no boundaries. and adheres to no cultural mores. And the ones who are engaged in this nefarious activity do so with impunity. People are being taken against their will. In the cover of darkness in the dead of night, they are subjected to bizarre examinations that are often sexual in nature. These people are terrified, violated, confused, and with no place to turn to, as who would believe them? This is their story.